Hello everybody, Mark aka The Nerdy Punk with you in tonight for a new video. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, before we start tonight's video, cheers everybody. Tonight's uh, drink of choice is some uh, Johnny Walker Red. So, hope you all are having a fantastic weekend. We are approaching 24 hours from Oscars 2023. So, today I have my Oscars ballot. We are going to go through this and I am going to give you my predictions for what is going to happen tomorrow night. So yes, the Oscars are on ABC tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I act like I'm a, pro a promoter or something, but I really want you guys to watch if you're watching this video, which I think if you do watch my videos, you probably watch the Oscars anyway. But <laughs> nonetheless, uh, I feel like every year, the the talk is about how nobody cares about the Oscars anymore, and I just, I want people to care <laughs> a little bit more. And not because people are slapping each other at the show or anything. So, uh, it's a great night to honor movies, and every single year I get frustrated with the Oscars. Like, they never honor the movies that I want them to honor fully, you know? Like, Babylon, my favorite movie of the year. It's up for three awards, none of them in the, like, super mainstream categories, so... You know, I feel like every year they disrespect movies that they should be respecting. And there's all kinds of stuff in it that makes it unfortunate and frustrating for us movie lovers. But it is the biggest night to honor the movie industry in the entire year. And I think that's pretty cool for this uh, amazing art form. So today we're going to run through all 23 categories. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on a lot of the smaller categories. Partly because I don't know as much about them, but partly also because... Uh, I want to get to the to the bigger categories of the night and give you guys my thoughts because I have a lot more thoughts with those categories. So we're going to start out with the short films. I have not seen any of the short films. Uh, a lot of people struggle to watch these uh, for whatever reason. So I know nothing about them other than the titles. And I have watched a few videos on going based on odds to win. So the animated short... I am picking My Year of Dicks <laughs> to win that one. Uh, that it, title alone <laughs> is reason enough. I've heard good things about it, obviously. Um, this uh, this one, I think, is like in the top three of choices. May not be the number one, but I'm picking My Year of Dicks. Um, best short film for live action short. I'm going Les Pupilles. I think that's how you say that. This one is produced by Alfonso Cuaron, and sometimes I feel like the Oscars picks movies with some famous people behind them, so I'm going with that one for that reason. And finally, the short subject documentary, I am going with Stranger at the Gate, which I think is one of the favorites in that category. So <laughs> I feel like every year, like if you do an Oscars pool with your friends or coworkers, I feel like every year the shorts always kill us, <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Overall, I think on the Oscars this year, it's kind of hard to predict some of the things that are going to happen. I feel like this is, aside from really the best picture race, which I think is pretty locked down, um, every single category I go through here, I'm like, nearly every single category, I could see this going a lot of ways. <laughs> and that's that's pretty cool, I guess, for being able to watch the, the ceremony and having some excitement. Getting into the technical categories. So we have visual effects. Uh, your nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. And I think this one is easily going to go to Avatar The Way of Water. Um, that is probably gonna be the only Oscar it's gonna walk away with, but you cannot doubt the visual effects in that movie. It is incredible. Next up, we have film editing. So nominees are Banshees of Sharon, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. And I am going with uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once for film editing. Uh, I think that all the momentum is heading towards that movie and it is a fantastically well edited film. Next category is production design. So. Nominees, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans for production design. 
I think uh, a lot of the momentum is trending towards Babylon, which would also be my pick. As we get through some of these categories, I'm gonna give you my choice as well for that category. I think that Babylon uh, is definitely deserving. Production design's amazing on that movie. Just the party scene alone is fantastic. So that's what I'm going with. Next up is cinematography. This one's a bit of a tough category in my opinion. You have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablements. And like I said, this is, actually no, I read the wrong, <laughs> I read the wrong category. Rewind. Um, the cinematography is All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, or A False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths, uh, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. And I am going to go with All Quiet on the Western Front. There we go. Uh, that movie has seen a lot of love in recent uh, award ceremonies, and I think it's going to walk away with a few awards, and this is one that I could see it picking up. I think this is kind of one of the weaker categories, too, so I think it's kind of trending in that direction. Next up, I'll try to read the right list here. Um, costume design. We have Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Um, I think this would be an upset if anybody but Elvis won, so I'm picking Elvis. Next one here, makeup and hairstyling. This is an interesting category because the winners of makeup and hairstyling are oftentimes tied to the best acting victories. So let me read through the nominees real quick. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. So of course we have the two best actor frontrunners, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Austin Butler for Elvis, kind of going head to head here with the makeup and hairstyling category. And I think this is a category to watch when you're watching the ceremony. If this category goes to one of those movies over the other, which it will, I think that is gonna become the front runner for best actor. So I am picking The Whale, which may give you a little bit of an idea as to who I think is going to win Best Actor. Uh, I think The Whale is going to win this. Um, I think it's very close between The Whale and Elvis. Uh, both movies had very good makeup. Uh, the Whale, though, it's the makeup on Fraser's character is so realistic. And if the makeup was bad in that movie, it would have ruined the whole movie. So they had to have good makeup, and they did. So that's why I'm picking The Whale. That would also be my choice if I had to choose between those two films. Next up is sound. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. And for this one, I am picking Top Gun Maverick. I think this may be the only award that Top Gun Maverick walks away with in the ceremony, and I think it's definitely deserving. If I had a choice, from these nominees, I would pick the Batman out of this list. I think that had phenomenal sound. Next one up, original song. Don't really think this is a uh, competition here. We have applause from Tell It Like a Woman, uh, Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, that's Lady Gaga. You have Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever, that was by Rihanna. You have Not Too Not Too from RRR. And you have This Is A Life from Everything, Everywhere, All At Once. Um, a lot of these songs are going to be performed during the ceremony, which should be pretty cool. I think this is easily going to Natu Natu. Uh, I have not seen RRR, but I've heard just amazing things about it. Then everybody loves that movie, especially the song in the movie itself. So that is definitely, I think, going to RRR. The only nomination for that movie, which is unfortunate. Um, next up. We have original score, so similar lines here. All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inisherin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans. And I think this one is going to be Babylon's second Oscar. It is going to Justin Hurwitz of Babylon. That score is fantastic. It is one of the best parts of the movie, and I love the movie so much. So uh, I think, you know, Justin Hurwitz has already won one Oscar. I think this is going to be number two for him. Next up category here, international feature film, All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina 1985, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl. Uh, I don't think this one's going to be close either. All Quiet on the Western Front should win this easily. I think if it's nominated for Best Picture, it should win the Best International Feature, in my opinion. 
Um, documentary feature. So this one I've only seen one of the movies in. Uh, we have All That Breathes, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Navalny. I have seen Navalny, and I think Navalny is going to win, and I think it's definitely well-deserved. That was a fantastic documentary. Really felt like a thriller, and it has one of the most insane scenes I've ever seen put to film. Like, my jaw was wide open in this movie. Uh, it is incredible. If you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it as soon as possible. It follows the Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, who pr was protesting Vladimir Putin, and they nearly assassinated him, and then he's been basically in prison for the past year and a half on some bogus charges. Uh, it's an incredible documentary, and such an urgent and really important issue, not just for Russia, but really for the world, considering you know, Putin's actions in recent times. So I, I think it is a fantastic documentary that is gonna get a well-deserved victory. <clears throat> I have heard great things about All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, which I want to see, but it's coming to HBO Max, I think in like two weeks. So I'm just gonna wait and I'll watch it when it comes to HBO Max. That way I can watch it, you know, basically for free. Um, you know, you pay your service, subscription service, but you don't have to buy the movie itself. So I'm going to wait on that. Definitely want to see it. Heard great things about that as well. I wouldn't be shocked if that pulled out a victory, but I think it's going to go to Navalny. Next category is animated feature. We have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. I haven't seen any of these. <laughs> I have a really tough time watching animated movies these days. It's so many of them are geared towards children and I understand that even if they're geared towards children, they can still have really good scenes that adults will enjoy. I just have, as somebody that does not have children <laughs> I have, and doesn't really have a whole lot of, you know, relatives who are children, I have a few, but uh, it's, it's a tough time for me <laughs> to watch any kids movie these days, so. Nonetheless, I haven't seen any of these. Um, I, I've heard amazing things about Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, and I've heard that it's almost a lock to win. So that is my pick for the victory for Best Animated Feature. Next one is Adapted Screenplay. In adapted Screenplay, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, uh, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, <laughs> Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. Now, first of all, Top Gun Maverick has no business in this category. <laughs> I don't hate that movie, but it should not be nominated for screenplay. Nonetheless, I think this one is going to be an incredibly well-deserved victory for Sarah Polly and Women Talking. Um, that would be my choice, and that's what I think the Academy is going to pick. That is a screenplay movie, if I've ever seen one. It almost feels, to a certain extent, like a... Uh, a theater adaptation. It's so screenplay driven and performance driven and it knocks it out of the park. For context, I just watched this movie last night, so I have some recency bias, but it was a fantastic movie. Sarah Polly did such an amazing job, uh, especially with the screenplay. I wasn't as big of a fan of her direction um, and that mainly came down to the color grading of the movie, which I did not care for, but the story itself was so emotional and powerful and hard-hitting that it is absolutely deserving of this Oscar. And I will be upset and shocked if Sarah Polly does not walk away with that Oscar. All right, we are getting down to the nitty-gritty here. We got a few categories left. Uh, we have original screenplay. This is one of the tougher ones for me as well. Nominees are Banshees of Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, the Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Boy, <laughs> that's a heck of a list. Um, I've gone back and forth between who I think is going to win, between Banshees and Everything Everywhere. And the momentum seems to be heavily on the side of Everything Everywhere. So that is my choice. I initially had, I literally had initially marked down Banshees, scribbled it out, and put down Everything Everywhere because... Part of me is like, I don't see how they snub Martin McDonough again. But then also, part of me is like, I think if if Everything Everywhere has the night that I'm expecting it to have, a screenplay win will be one of those victories. So 
I'm going with Everything Everywhere. Um, tough choice, definitely. I think Martin McDonough is very worthy of an Oscar. I think he should have won one back in 2017, but um, I, I think he's going to come up short yet again, unfortunately. All right, next up here, actor in a supporting role. This was not a tough one. Your nominees, we have Brennan Gleeson from Banshees of Inna Sharon, Brian Tyree Henry from Causeway, uh, Judd Hirsch from The Fablemans, Barry Keoghan from uh, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, and Ki He Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once. And Ki He Kwan is going to win this award. I would fall out of my chair and collapse if Kihi Kwan did not win this award. I think he is deserving. He would be my pick. He has won everything. <laughs> like, everything he's been up for, he has won. There's no way that it's not Kihi Kwan. I would be insanely shocked. I, I would lock that in. Like, I know you're not going to win any big amounts of money by betting on that category, but I would bet anything <laughs> on that category that Kihi Kwan's going to win. It's just an amazing story, too. I love every time he gets up there and gives a speech. I love it. He's just filled with so much positive energy and I feed off of that. Uh, so I can't wait to see him give an Oscar speech. Next category is actress in a supporting role. So actor in supporting is really easy. Actress is very difficult. Uh, your nominees, we have Angela Bassett from Black Panther with Kana Forever, Hong Chow from The Whale, Kerry Condon from The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything Everywhere, and Stephanie Sue, Everything Everywhere. All the performances are good. I would choose Hong Chao. She is one of the emotional anchors of the whale, and she, along with Fraser, make that movie for me. I think she would be an amazing choice, but she's not going to win. There's no chance she has of winning. So you're down to really a three-horse race here. You have Angela Bassett, who was the initial frontrunner, then you have Jamie Lee Curtis, who's kind of come on as of late. And then you have Carrie Condon, who's kind of been pretty steadily through the race. Um, she's picked up the BAFTA win, which was a big one. And I could really see it going to any of those three. My debate really was down to Carrie Condon or Jamie Lee Curtis. And my gut feeling here is that they're gonna give it to Jamie Lee Curtis. She's an industry veteran. She has never won an Oscar before, and she has delivered some amazing performances in the past. I think she's gonna win it. I think the, the momentum is behind everything everywhere, and she's going to win. <laughs> that is almost purely a gut feeling. The only statistic I have is her victory at the Screen Actors Guild, which uh, is a pretty good indicator. Screen Actors Guild and BAFTA, I think, are the two really good indicators of victories and they split <laughs> between Carrie Condon and Jamie Lee Curtis. So I'm picking Jamie Lee Curtis. I would not be surprised if it's Carrie Condon. I would be somewhat surprised if it's Angela Bassett, but I wouldn't be shocked either. So this is an interesting category, definitely one to watch. Um, leading role. So start out with actor in a leading role. We have Austin Butler from Elvis, Colin Farrell from The Banshees, uh, Brendan Fraser from The Whale, Paul Mescal from After Sun and Bill Nighy from Living. I want to give a quick shout out to my boy Paul Mescal, who uh, I act like I know the dude, <laughs> who was amazing in that movie. I'm so glad that he got a nomination, but he's not going to win. Uh, this is really down to two. At one point, it was a three horse race again. Colin Farrell has since kind of dropped out of that. Uh, I think it's really, a, it's going to be either Austin Butler or Brendan Fraser. And it's a coin flip to me. It's really close. And I will not be heartbroken if either one of them wins, but I will be a little bit disappointed if it doesn't go to Brendan Fraser, who is my pick. I think the whale is going to pick up that makeup and hairstyling victory. And I think Brendan Fraser is going to pick up that victory for uh, best actor. And I am <clears throat> really behind him. I really want to see him win. I think it would be great for him. And he's got an amazing story. I would love to see him win that first Oscar. Uh, Austin Butler was great. Don't get me wrong. I think Brendan Fraser was even better. So, uh, moving on to actress in a leading role. Another race, really close race between two people. So your full nominations list here. Kate Blanchett for Tar. Anna de Armas for Blonde. 
Andrea Riseborough for Two Leslie, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. And this is really between Michelle Yeoh and Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett, I think, has more stats behind her. Michelle Yeoh has more of the recent momentum behind her. This was, again, a coin flip. Um, I'm going with my heart a little bit above my head, and I'm picking Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think Michelle Yeoh was amazing in that movie. I think it would be great to see her win her first Oscar. Kate Blanchett has already won three Oscars. Um, you know, I think she's deserving. I think if I were to look at this objectively, I think Kate Blanchett was a little bit better in her performance in Tar. But again, I feel like that momentum is behind everything, everywhere all at once. I think Michelle Yeoh is more of the like good feelings pick. <laughs> Nothing against Kate Blanchett. She's a great person. But I think all of like the, what makes you feel really good inside is to give it to somebody that hasn't had one before. And that's Michelle Yeoh. And I think uh, she's gonna pull it out. Would not be surprised at all if Kate Blanchett wins, by the way. All right, real quick drink break here and then we'll get into the big two categories. So, best director. We have Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Anna Sharon. Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, a.k.a. the Daniels, for Everything Everywhere. Uh, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. Todd Field for Tar. Uh, Ruben Osland for Triangle of Sadness. So, a pretty good crop, I think. Um, it was really kind of between the Daniels and Spielberg for me, and I think this category has gotten a lot easier as the uh, award season has gone on, I think this is definitely going to the Daniels. I would be surprised if anybody but the Daniels won this. Um, I think, again, the momentum is behind this movie. It's going to carry them. I think they directed the hell out of this movie. They wrote the hell out of this movie. I think they're walking away with two Oscars. So that is my pick. And of course, it kind of makes the best picture pick kind of anticlimactic, but here we go. This is how I think it's gonna go on Oscars night anyway. It's gonna be kind of anticlimactic at the end, but there's gonna be so many amazingly close races throughout the show itself. Your Best Picture nominees. Once again, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inisherin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. A pretty good group for the most part. I've seen eight of these. I still, it, basically the same as last year. I watched eight of the movies. I missed out on two of them. I still have missed out on two of them. I have not seen The Fablemans, and I have not seen All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, I need to be watching those, but I'm probably not going to see them before the show actually happens. I'll try to see them later, but then again, I still haven't seen Coda. So, you know, we'll see. But my pick here is Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's the same that I would choose. If I had to vote from these 10 movies, I would choose Everything Everywhere. And I think that is what's going to win. Um, I would be shocked. If you look at the statistics, it's won just about everything that it needs to win to come home with this award. And I would be, again, very shocked if it loses. So I will predict, or set it down in stone right here, Tomorrow night at about 10 o'clock, depending on where you're living, um, everything everywhere all at once will be the best picture winner. So, and I will be very happy with that. That is, that is my choice out of the 10 options. Um, the one movie that I think could come in there and steal it from it is All Quiet on the Western Front because of the BAFTA win, but even that I don't think is enough. Uh, everything everywhere has overperformed just about everywhere. <laughs> pun intended. Uh, I do not see a movie that's going to come in there and take it. I think this is Everything Everywhere's year, and I think that's well-deserved. So if I had a second choice, my second choice would probably be Tar or maybe Women Talking. I think both of those movies were fantastic as well. So that's the Oscar ballot. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know. I'm feeling somewhat confident, but then again, there's so many races that could go either way that I have no idea. So we will see. I hope it's a fantastic Oscars night. I hope you all enjoy the show. Um, yeah, have an amazing rest of your weekend. See you later.